Uh, straight to the point, first things first. Uh, what do you make of the FDC split? The FDC party leadership is divided, in my opinion, or in the opinion of uh, most analysts or some analysts, over the question of those in the leadership who seem to have succumbed or given up or capitulated or surrendered to the NRM rule and those who would want to continue with the struggle and their mission to win power from NRM. So there are those, it seems, who feel they are tired and they should now join the NRM or be part of the NRM system and can get some offices. So they are office seekers. And they, 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 they are those who say, no, we are going to continue the struggle. Now there is that clash. And it seems they have reached a point of no return. They have now irreconcilable issues they are pursuing. And I think it was time to split when you have, if you can use the analogy of the family, when the, the people want to, to divorce uh, because of some marital challenges, uh, they reach a time when you can divorce because I think there is one who is uh, supposed or expected or suspected to be in adulterous marriage, political adulterous marriage with NRM and there are those who are suspecting it and the two cannot coexist anymore. They can separate so that they can divorce, so that those who want to go and remarry can remarry and those who can get married to the person who has been in an adulterous marriage with them, they can pursue it. So I think where they reached yesterday was more or less the beginning of divorce. The issues of the court processes are just formalizing the divorce. Mm. So at the end of the day, there will be uh, a step to remarry? No, they can remarry others not to reconnect again. They can remarry other suitors who are in the, out there in the political arena. It has a history. It has a history, for example, Uganda National Congress in 1958-59 had two factions. There was Obote faction and Musa's faction. They decided to separate. And in 1960, the, 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 the Obote faction married the UPC, U, UPU faction, and they formed UPC. And they, 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 they went ahead. In, uh, outside Uganda, there was uh, in Ghana, the United Gold Coast Congress, and then Nkrumah split from it with uh, CC, CPP, uh, and he, he, he came into office, and the other ones remained collaborating with the British. So those things happen, I think that is what has happened in FDC. Okay, so if there is no more room for coexistence. At because the reasons why they are splitting are fundamental. Mm. The reasons are not merely administrative or conflict over positions. They are conflicts over direction. There is a faction which thinks it should now go and coexist with the NRM, maybe officially, and get offices. And there is one which says, no, we are still pursuing the, the option, the objective, the mission of uh, coming into power 
and maybe putting up a new dispensation, or also being in the big office to shape issues the way they want. Okay. Professor, both parties have accused each other of these reasons you call fundamental. Uh, for example, when you say some, the party is in bed with the NRM. So these allegations have been cross-cutting. Uh, no, the point I'm making is that the Najana Nkumbi faction's uh, leadership seems to be, according to some analysts, seems to be saying we have been in this uh, public sphere for some time. Yeah. We don't seem to be capturing power. Uh, let us uh, join the one who is in power and maybe we can gain some offices. There is another faction, the Katonga faction, which is saying the struggle continues. Let us continue with our original mission. So one suspects that the other one is sabotaging the main mission that they were pursuing. And the other one seems to be quietly pursuing offices somewhere. And these are irreconcilable because they are directional differences. They are not the struggle for power within FDC. No. I think some people have thought that this was an issue of the struggle for power within the FDC, intra struggles for positions in FDC. No. These are directional differences. Which direction should we take? Should we continue pursuing the original mission of removing NRM from power or should we join them and get offices there? And then there are those who are saying, no, for us we are continuing to pursue the project of being in power and shaping society and issues according to our, our thinking. That, those are fundamental differences that are irreconcilable and to me the best thing that has happened to them is to split. So if I, can, I, can, I need to understand you very well, when you took me back to the history, what uh, advantage came out of this? Yeah, the advantage that came out of splitting is that they, they left pretense and hypocrisy. You cannot pursue a national project more so state building and nation building when you are hiding behind certain uh, things. So uh, the, 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 the best thing that happens when you split is that you pursue your missions without suspecting the, your, your, your colleagues. So if you continue suspecting your colleagues, you cannot pursue your goals and your mission very well. But secondly, when you split, then it gives you opportunity to, jo to, 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 to have alliances with others and become stronger. Uh, hitherto, the challenge they have been having, possibly if, for example, one group wanted to pursue an alliance with other oppositional forces like, say, uh, NUP or ANT, there are those who would pull the opposite direction. Now, if you have uh, one faction wanted to uh, ally with NLM, then they would fear that the other group would uh, interfere with them. Now, when they split, let them go without having to suspect their colleagues and without hypocrisy. The problem of African politics and the problem of African politics is pretense and hypocrisy. Now, the split takes away hypocrisy. So that is the positive thing about what has happened. So there are analysts who look at it as negative and they are talking about maybe holding God, continuing to engage in dialogues so that we can reconcile. When you reconcile to irreconcilable positions, you are weakening your organization. You better split. In English they say, count the costs, let the NRM, the, sorry, the, F, the FDC, let the FDC factions count the costs, split and pursue their goals and missions with one heart, not the heart of always suspecting the other one might be with the other group 
the other one will, will be with the other group. Uh, the Katonga faction has been uh, choosing the Najanankumi faction of being in the bed with NRM or wanting to send FDC to NRM. Then the Najanankumi faction has been uh, choosing the Katonga faction of wanting to send FDC to NUP. And if they continue in that situation, they will not pursue their missions as they would have wanted. So let them split. It is like staying in such a, a natural marriage when you are always splitting each, uh, uh, suspecting each other, you can reach a point where you can even kill each other or kill the whole family. So why not split and pursue your lover uh, according to your heart? Is this a political strategy? I've had analysts uh, talking about the legal question that uh, uh, these ones will, uh, are wrong legally, these ones are right legally. This is a political question. It's not a legal question. So let them battle it at the political level. What happened yesterday was battling it at the political re level. Rather than using, hiding behind legal processes when you are actually instrumentalizing the judiciary for political ends. And this is also actually watering down the judiciary. And the judiciary has also allowed itself to be brought into this circus of FDC. No, this is a political question and it can be resolved politically and I think let them split, pursue their objectives without suspecting each other. I think that is what is the positive aspect that has come out of this. Of course, the negative one being that the image that they have had in the leadership, the legitimacy that they have had in the followership is a challenge let them find out how to do damage control. So what chances remain with the FDC to keep on the table of men? Uh, what about the table of women? You have to be gender sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, FDC as a party should be separated from FD leadership. So what has a split is FDC leadership, not FDC forership as such. I think the FDC forership and the FDC motivation, why it was founded, are still, I think, in the right path in their mission. It is the FDC leadership that has splintered. So what can FDC do? I don't know which FDC now. FDC should not be should not look at itself as merely the words fdc or the label fdc it should be the mission so let that group which thinks that it represents the fdc mission pursue it under a different label it doesn't have to be the fdc label it can be any other label but the mission should still be one and it will keep floating. Possibly, to give the, the historical example, mm. I think the mission of Uganda National Congress did not end with a split of Uganda National Congress in 1958. It continued and it was expressed in a different way. Let me even take you to Kenya across the border there. The, the, there was a mission of Kadu led by Moi. It was pursued through Kanu, led by Moi again, but in Kanu, not with Kadu. So Kadu may have ceased to exist as a label, but the mission of Ka Kadu continued within the Kanu label. So FDC can continue with, under a different label. I mean, FDC mission and ideas and values, if they are serious about them, can continue under a different label, just like the UNC ideas continued under UPC, not necessarily under UNC as a label. Mm. Don't you think this can also bring, uh, uh, bring back hypocr hypocrites again? No, it has cleared, it has cleared uh, hypocrisy now. 
like the example I gave you of uh, of, of Ghana, okay. United Gold Coast Convention. Its objectives, ideas of gaining independence, continued under CPP of Nkrumah when Nkrumah and the group realized that the UGCC leadership was in a marriage with the colonialists. They split and Ghana attained, attained self-rule and self-determination. So the issue is not the label. The issue is the mission that you are pursuing. So, uh, Professor, just quickly, is the Katonga faction cleaning their hands from that that Mane scandal, which was recently? I... <laughs> the challenge with uh, the politics in Uganda, in this banana republic, is that you can even not even be sure whether the Katonga faction leadership is all united also under the uh, pursuing the their mission the original mission you may find within the katonga faction there are also those who actually are pursuing offices in nrm so we cannot be sure whether the katonga faction is united in the mission that they are pursuing they could also have other people who are pursuing other missions that is a challenge we don't know but gradually you may find within the katonga faction there are also those who are pursuing the office missions yes we are in the road to 2026 and when we see such happenings what does this mean the road to 2026 is about what personally i don't know whether we are even clear about what we are pursuing in 2026. 2026 can be uh, a, a, a place as a turning point in the history of Uganda because uh, our president, President Museven, uh, is aging and uh, so far, in the, for the last 37 or so years, he is the one who has been holding Uganda together we don't know what would happen in 2026. We are here excited about the split within the FDC, but we could have a split within Uganda if we are not careful. So, when we are pursuing 2026, are we pursuing a project of keeping Uganda united, of avoiding a failed state, or we are pursuing offices in 2026? If we are pursuing offices in 2026, I want to caution Ugandans that we may end up pursuing nothing, air, ghosts, because those offices we are pursuing may not be there after 2026. So why don't we pursue the project of nation building and state building in 2026? Those who are excited of pursuing offices, whether they are in the ruling party or outside the ruling party, might be pursuing a split of Uganda, not a split of the parties. But those in the struggle will say this will come at a cost. Which struggle are you talking about? Can you define the struggle now? Is there a clear struggle that Ugandans are pursuing? Personally, I am in the struggle for nationhood, the national question struggle. I don't know your struggle. But others, their struggle is offices. They want to hold offices in the government and get money and get rich quick. But we may get this, this wealth, but this wealth may come to naught when the country, the, nation, the national question is not resolved. So people claim, pretend, are hypocrites that they are pursuing a struggle for patriotism, a struggle for what? All indicators in practice are not a struggle for nationhood, are a struggle for offices. And even those who went to the bush claiming that they were pursuing a struggle for nationhood, when you see their practices, there is no nationhood struggle they are pursuing. They are pursuing offices through either the military means or through 
commercialization of politics. And this is not going to take this country ahead. The pursuing of offices as a struggle is not going to take this country ahead. So what would be the best process to struggle for nationhood? The best process would be for people to be sober enough and have a national dialogue and we agree on principles and the direction that we want this country to take, have principled values, principled political norms, especially in the political class, and pursue the goal of building a nation. Once we have a, 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 a legitimate nation state, then we can pursue development goals, like the Southeast Asian countries have done. Singapore or Malaysia or Thailand or South Korea pursued the national question, the nationhood goal. When they got it, now they are pursuing development and democratization. Here, people are pursuing offices at all costs. They don't mind about whether the one in office merits it in terms of passion and ideas and skills and competence. But as long as you can dance to the tunes of the political leadership, whether in the government or opposition. Okay. So my next question is similar to what we talked about earlier, but I would love you if you stress this, if you stress this better. Uh, the split gives a road for alliance. You mentioned about that. Now, uh, are we going to see this more of alliance if it what I was saying is that the split uh, gives freedom for one group to have a unified ideology and then a unified direction. Now, the issue is not whether NUPU is going to take advantage of FDC split or FDC is going to take advantage of NUPU. The issue is for the split to provide a space for negotiation for pursuing a mission that will unite this country under a, a legitimate state, not a legitimate state. So the issue is not taking advantage of the other. I would wish the leadership to take advantage of the space created by avoiding to have suspicion of other people who are pursuing offices. So can the, off, can the forces, the political class forces, pursuing statehood, the national question statehood, coalesce together? Even those from the NRM, can they also make alliances, make a coalition of people who are pursuing statehood, not people pursuing offices? That would be the right path for Uganda. The issue is not one taking advantage of the other because any of these other groups, whether NUP, whether DP, UPC, and FDC, they are all liable to being bought. If the leadership is pursuing offices, anybody can be bought because there is somebody who has got offices. But if they are pursuing national goals of statehood, then let's have all forces, whether in opposition or NRM or civil, uh, civil society or, or civil service, come together to pursue the nationhood state goal. Otherwise, nobody should take advantage of the other because all opposition parties are vulnerable to being both provided the leadership interest is offices. So the politics of attaining offices will not take this country any further, whether Katonga or Najandankumbi. Okay, so uh, my next question, Professor, how do we distance this situation from divide and rule politics? See, divide and rule politics is always there in all political dispensations. What immunizes leaders or politicians or political class from divide and rule is pursuing a clear goal, being committed to the goal, having a passion to the goal, and that will anchor you 
into the direction for which you want to pursue. Otherwise, anybody in power will always take advantage of his opponents to divide them, more so in a banana republic where the principles are not very clear and those who have state power have resources to buy the opposition. The resources is not, is not only money, it is political offices. And there are people who have been pursuing the mission of political offices and they have not seen it in the last 35 years or 20 years. And when they look around and they see they are not nearer entering into the office, then they succumb, they give up. They say, now let us surrender. And they have surrendered, but they are still hypocritical that they have not surrendered, but they have surrendered. From your submission, Professor, it looks like there is no single growth or, or development in the democracy in Uganda. In the whole of Africa, not only Uganda. That's why we are now beginning to see a reversal of what we had attained at independence and since the breakup of the Soviet Union. The democratic path has now a reversal because, one, we still have a challenge in post-colonial countries that we have not attained a state of nationhood. So when you don't have a nationhood, then you are likely to pursue offices. And the offices can be pursued opportunistically. And anybody is vulnerable to opportunism in Uganda. So as long as we have not embraced the norms of pursuing political missions of nationhood, but offices, then we shall remain in this flux. Unfortunately, God forbid, we may have a failed state. The state might fail and the center will not hold and things will fall apart. So what, what is happening in FDC can happen in NUP, can happen in NRM, can happen in any, in any party. So the issue is not that certain parties are inherently disorganized. No, 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 no. There is no party that is inherently disorganized. The, the problem is individuals who are pursuing politics in a country that has not attained the state of nationhood. And unfortunately, the political class is not pursuing statehood. They are pursuing other issues. The, somebody gave an analogy of somebody who lost a coin in one place, but went and looked for it in a different place. It was at night. And when he was asked, why are you pursuing a coin here? Is it here? No, he says it is not lost here. It is lost somewhere. But then why are you pursuing it where you didn't lose it? He says that is only where there is light. So Ugandans, the political class, are pursuing nationhood in political offices. But Ugandans have not lost political certainty and political uprightness in offices. They have lost it in having upright norms for state building. There is no clear ideology, whether of a party or an individual in Uganda. The only ideology, ideology is supposed to be of a group, a social group, not an individual. The individual has a philosophy, not an ideology. So there is no one-man ideology in Uganda. There is no clear ideology. We are supposed to pursue the ideology. The ideologies would be things like social justice. The ideology would be like self-determination. The ideology would be republicanism or monarchism or something like that. So there is no clear ideology or principles in Uganda. We are all pursuing the, the wheel wind. Only that some people pretend that they are very clear in the ideology, but if you ask them, which ideology are you pursuing? They will say, I am pragmatic. Anything will work. Anything that works is what I will pass you. Mm. So, Professor, the question of the problem with Uganda's political parties in general. Mm. Problem uh, are very many. There is no one question. Some of the problems 
are organizational, others are political. So uh, the political parties which have been in power, like UPC or uh, NRM, their problem, uh, the, 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 their strengths lies in organizational capacities, whereby they have resources, they have money to pay for political support, to buy political support. They have positions in the government to buy political support. And they have the military to buttress their positions. Uh, but those in opposition, although they seem to be having political advantages, although they pretend like issues of corruption or issues of nepotism or tribalism or whatever, they have organizational challenges because they don't have the funds, they don't have a united ideology that unifies them, they do not have positions to give to their supporters, they do not have charismatic leaders to bring them together, they do not have a united country to capitalize on because some of their problems are not inherent in them, or even in leadership, is because you have got a poor population which can easily be bought during elections. You have a poor population which can be intimidated because when you are poor, you can be intimidated, not because you support somebody, but because you have got a high sense of survival. You know that you can only survive when you are with the government in power. So those are the challenges that the political parties have in any developing country, in any post-colonial state. The challenge is that the political class has not correctly identified the problems, they have only pursued offices. And finally, the electorate, because if the political class have not identified the problem, the electorate, uh, the kind of people they send to positions, don't you think they also need to be blamed? No. You see, the electorate is vulnerable. One, they are poor, and therefore they are vulnerable. They are still entangled and embedded in their tribal sentiments and identities and they cannot overgrow them, outgrow them. Many of them have never reached Kampala, the area where I come from. If you delay, like at the well, if you are a child and you have gone to fetch water and you delay there, they say, had you gone to Kampala, why have you overdelayed? Because Kampala is so far from them. So their attitudes and values are still localized. That is the, the, the challenge of the electorate. So you do not expect the electorate, the common man and woman, the peasants, to outgrow their local, local identities. So you cannot blame them for what they are doing. For them, they have got a high sense of survival. Any politician is supposed to bring them something. And they don't know how you get it. They don't know that they are taxed even. A local person doesn't know he's taxed. Once they remove the graduated tax, then he thinks he's not taxed. So that is a different matter. So it is a political class that has let the people down. Definitely the ordinary people will always vote somebody who is nearer to them in terms of uh, primordial identities, whether he belongs to your religion, or belongs to your church or mosque, or belongs to your faith, or belongs to your tribe or clan, they are ready to follow that person in order to get some crumbs that come from the table. The issue is, who are those people who are dividing the cake on the table and are, are releasing only crumbs instead of expanding the duff in the bread so that most of us can have something to share from that bread? Thank you very much, Professor. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting uh, me. Next time, uh, we shall dwell much into the history of politics of identity. And all of politics of identity alongside the politics of offices, okay. rather than politics of nation building, nationhood, state building. Unless we pursue that one, Africa is going to remain march, marching time, marking time and not growing. However much we might make these empty statements that we always roganeer during election time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now you can imagine all of this. I have not seen anybody who is pursuing the national agenda. Yeah. They are pursuing offices. Yeah, yeah.